So thanks for, oh, we have already some nice pictures that show how engaged you were in discussion. So I hope you enjoyed this interactive sessions and we want now to have some very brief feedback from, from each of the groups, each of the tables actually. There will, we have really captured, uh, we will take pictures of the posters. The rapporteurs have taken notes and we will really harvest all of this. But this is now to harvest uh, a glimpse of what you discussed. I really noticed you had very intense discussions, so we cannot repeat this here, but oh, wow. Um, but um, so we also have uh, actually, and I forgot to mention that uh, had to put these topics and questions into Slido. So the people who follow online go to Slido EGW 2023. Uh, there you also find the question, but also you, this will stay open. You can, if you, something still comes up to your mind uh, that we should take note of, put it in there. This will be looked at for the report that JSC is doing and also for the Eurogeo Secretariat. So we start with the first group and who is going to present some of the results from the national Eurogeo links synergies and links between Eurogeo, Copernicus and National Geo. The, who wants to report from that table? Yeah, Alexia. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> so uh, to summarize the, uh, first of all, the achievements, then the challenges in the way forward. Uh, the achievement is that uh, synergies are already existing and new synergies are uh, being created more and more. If there is a good networking, uh, new perspectives open. And uh, for example, there we had an example of the human settlements layer, the in-situ component collecting uh, really in-situ requirements in uh, good uh, uh, detail and uh, collecting data and also achieving agreements. Uh, Copernicus was acknowledged as a great source of data and services and uh, Eurogeo that is bridging all uh, Earth observation sectors uh, also in more informal way than Copernicus, so it's more open and more, more welcoming uh, for uh, newcomers. Uh, there is an increased awareness of uh, the Eurogeo and there are more and more uh, desire to connect with Copernicus, uh, for example, the research infrastructure. Now for the challenges. The challenge uh, is uh, to achieve more cooperation and better connection uh, of Eurogeo with Copernicus, uh, both in terms of governance and implementation. So to cooperate with other data providers as well. And apart from satellite data, uh, aerial and in-situ data are well needed and in a good time resolution. And uh, another challenge was identified as the loss of institutional memory when uh, people are changing and uh, there are uh, changes in the decision-making bodies. Uh, the national initiatives uh, should coordinate with Eurogeo and Geo initiatives. And uh, another challenge that uh, the external actors, uh, actors should get familiar and uh, also new countries should get engaged. For example, we had the reference of East Europe. And finally, the way forward uh, is to encourage new members on how to get involved and uh, to explain them how they can benefit actually of their involvement in uh, Eurogeo and uh, Coper Copernicus to coordinate uh, the cooperation with external bodies and Eurogeo in a more coherent uh, way in the level of uh, the Commission with Copernicus and Eurogeo to connect these two parallel uh, pathways so that they come uh, in uh, uh, synergy. Uh, a think tank that uh, should discuss what to do with the data and services to set some priorities. And finally, the private sector should be aware of what Eurogeo and Copernicus offer in terms of products and services and to have access. And in this, the national focal points should have a role to explain the value of participation and uh, to support the newcomers. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. So thank you very much. I will uh, compliment a little bit, uh, Alexia. Um, uh, presentation. So, um, in terms of achievements, what we have analyzed is that uh, Copernicus is very much based in, in geo geos, and uh, some, most of the geospatial standards are actually used for all. We had many different challenges that we have uh, analyzed. In particular, how to involve the national stakeholders in, uh, in Eurogeo. So, what's in it for them? So now, for the moment, it's really time to gather needs from countries. Uh, reach uh, cities, especially municipalities at, uh, at urban level, but especially through a national mechanism. So 
from geo to euro geo, this is um, a big challenge to reflect on regional needs. And uh, one very particular topic that came out is actually in the involvement of non-EU countries. Uh, as we know now, the UK is uh, recently reintegrated into the Horizon program. So what's in it now? Should uh, uh, the UK in some parts be part, of, for example, of the high level working group or, or not? And of course, to any other associated countries. Um, what uh, something else that came out is that uh, at national geos we are uh, uh, facing different uh, uh, times and pace of uh, involvement and of uh, development of, uh, of corporations and initiatives. So should uh, at national level insert some mechanism in order to, I don't know, um, diverse best practices or sort of internal KPIs in order to really make nations accountable in this sense. So this is uh, something to uh, to discuss and how your job could go to national ministries, let's say. And the way forward, sorry, friends, is really to uh, eventually put some more time at your geo level into geo. So could uh, some uh, dedicated time to be uh, dedicated to these new connections? Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> The next topic is, was on alignment of your geo with the program. Yes. So uh, they, we had uh, several uh, questions and sub questions into this topic. So the first one was about the achievements of EuroGeo. So the major achievement is the open data policy and Copernicus, of course, which is something we always have to underline and never forget. Then uh, we also had a lot of improvements in research, infrastructures, and knowledge, thanks to Eurogeo. Um, we had a very big investments and coordination from the European Commission, but also at national level. Uh, we could develop efficient uh, networking and uh, opportunities to meet and develop uh, new consortiums if needed, now in the projects, but also for business uh, later if needed, we know each other. Uh, GEO and GEOs um, uh, being mentioned in the European course uh, provide a lot of uh, legitimacy to engage with people and uh, build the consortiums. And then uh, the brand is considered to be well known by some, but not by all. We will come back to that uh, a bit later. Considering the challenges, we had to mention which are the challenges for EuroGEO. Um, it is to first to clarify what is EuroGEO. Some people understand it differently. Uh, where to find help about Eurogeo. Uh, we need to clarify a Eurogeo branding. Uh, the, there is a need of coordination between the European level and the national uh, geos. And also there is a need to engage with the missing countries. There are some countries which are not represented here and to get le the legitimacy to represent Europe, we need to engage with these countries. Uh, Eurogeo is often missing in the course. GeoGeos is mentioned, but not Eurogeo. So this is also something that could be improved. And, and uh, we should get a stronger voice of Europe in the geo uh, programs. Uh, very often it's uh, fragmented at the geo uh, level. And we should clarify the impacts of a Eurogeo contribution to the geo initiatives and work program. Very often it's also uh, distributed and mentioned via projects, uh, but not enough via Eurogeo. The way forward would be to, um, uh, for the Eurogeo Euro Secretariat, it should be a coordination body with a clear understanding of the roles and the activity. So Eurogeo Euro should implement, uh, should be the implementation body of the high level working group. So in the same way we have the plenary and geosec, we could have the high level working group and Eurogeo Secretariat. Eurogeo must provide a clear mandate between the national and European levels. And uh, countries like uh, Swiss or UK could benefit from a clear mention in the Eurogeo also. Uh, then engage with new countries, I have mentioned that already. Uh, we could um, uh, linkage to the work program with a global scope because uh, right now there is a mix between projects and the framework program. So very often the projects have impacts on several uh, initiatives and this is difficult to track uh, that because we very much communicate at the level of the project. And then we should develop a stronger Eurogeo. And um, uh, we are not very much aligned with the organization of the other geo, geos, geo regions. And the link to the work program activity, I mentioned that. Um, okay, so con considering the outreach and communication, well, we think that uh, we should uh, have a Eurogeo uh, should be more easy to find uh, in the social medias. So we should have a at Eurogeo on Twitter and a LinkedIn account. 
it will make the communication easier. Uh, very often we communicate on the funding uh, frame like Horizon, but not Eurogeo. So we should have the funding and the, and the frame. So saying to benefit or supporting Eurogeo, something like that in the communication of the projects. Uh, yeah. So on this aspect, the guidelines uh, could change uh, at the European communication and promotion level. And uh, we should uh, be more prepared to participate in uh, events such as the uh, Geo Week with maybe some posters of all the fundings that come from Europe and benefit for the program. If we are always at this uh, uh, poster updated, it would be great. And we should uh, clarify the coordination support with the communication from GeoSec. So everything we communicate on the leverage and vice versa. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh... So that you know too much to with Marie Francoise. So, okay, perfect. Next, no, next are the RNI priorities for European UGS <laughs> evolution. Uh, so, uh, Nicola. Thank you. Okay, I'll try. It was quite a lively discussion. Among the achievements, well, certainly uh, in the last 10, uh, 20 years, we have uh, achieved uh, a good. Uh, uh, development of research infrastructure in terms of uh, monitoring, as you know, through S3 and other uh, structure, computing in terms of uh, high performing computing cloud, the open earth uh, observation cloud, and so on. And then we have also made a, a quite a bit progress on uh, integrated uh, global and regional observing system. Then uh, also among the achievements that we have improved quite a bit the multimedia modeling system to evaluate the impact of a different uh, dri environmental driver and pressure factor on uh, various ecosystem and how this ecosystem interact uh, to each other. And uh, also we have uh, improved the capacity in Europe to develop multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary research activity, although there is still room for improvement. And also open science. Open science, uh, we need, uh, you know, we have been working quite a bit to make available codes, uh, input, output for cross-checking about the, the, the findings and the knowledge. Uh, uh, and uh, also another important aspect has been highlighted as achievement to have a better cross-continental uh, research cooperation, although also for this, uh, there is uh, room for improvement. Among the challenges, certainly we needed to improve uh, uh, to do a better integration of uh, obs uh, observation with modeling data and uh, in a dynamic way because uh, all the earth system is a dynamic system so and also to pay more attention to the data quality in order to assess the uncertainty associated to our evaluation yeah i need it just 10 seconds uh, improve data accessibility certainly taking as example copernicus for example and also to improve uh, availability of a, a European open science cloud, because still now we are using clouds that are not a European. So among the way forward, certainly we need to improve integration of different uh, tools, integrate, uh, improve uh, data accessibility, because not all the data are accessible. We need to improve cloud infrastructure in Europe, because most of the, you know, very often the modeling and tools development are locked in in the specific platform and also to uh, make an effort to adapt the research tools for policy application because the final outcome is really to contribute to improve uh, the policy and decision making process thank you thank you Thank you. Uh, I will not repeat what Nicola said because many things that were addressed at our table are the same that uh, Nicola already said. I will stress uh, a few key points in, uh, that were in our discussion. Uh, about the achievement, a great importance has been given to the, uh, more, to the better accessibility of data 
that has been achieved in the last year, acknowledging the great work that has been done at a European level, for example, with Open Air or GBIF and uh, other uh, repositories like Zinodo to make data more findable. I would say that the culture of uh, uh, open data and fair data has improved a lot in the scientific community. And this has been stressed as a great achievement. And I think we must be proud of this in our community. Um, also, the role of the essential variables has been stressed, and it's, which is very important in the ecosystem community, especially. Uh, among the challenges, uh, a major uh, uh, aspect is uh, the sustainability of research projects, meaning that you know uh, when a, a research project finishes, it's difficult to give continuity to the research and to the fundability of data. So uh, this has, can be improved maybe with long-term programs that in which single research projects are inserted. So stress better the uh, long-term programs to reach a goal which is decadal or in 20, 30 years time in which our research programs are, are inserted. Uh, still, uh, despite the many progresses in finding data, uh, findability of data can be, can be improved. And another aspect is to improve, to foster research that uh, help to better the uncertainty in, uh, especially in ecosystems. So also bridging the uh, in-situ data with remote sensing data to improve the modeling at a regional level using uh, in situ data. But the, the, those in situ data needs to be harmonized. Um, a, an improvement in this is given by the infrastructures, but there are matter of improvement and more connection between the several infrastructures. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nicola. So the next question was on key elements of the Euro2 strategy and governance. Yes. Please be very brief on some key aspects. Thank you very much. We actually merged uh, two roundtables, so actually I should have four minutes instead of two. <laughs> So what, what I can say is that the, the commitment to the participants of the Eurogeo workshop is very high. At, at the end, we all traveled to Bolzano. It was a huge commitment. It took a long time on the road to come here. But the question that we had is, uh, is it more than a workshop? And this is where governance is coming in because governance, this is the mechanism through which each of our individual engagement in the workshop contributes to something bigger. And the bigger, I must say, the bigger overarching goal uh, wasn't entirely clear around the, the tables. And the mechanisms to make those individual contributions contribute to something bigger were not entirely clear either. So governance itself was not entirely clear. For example, uh, the, the, the national focal points are not uh, necessarily clearly identified. The participants were not really aware how to contact them and what they could do uh, with those national focal points. The action groups are highly appreciated uh, because this is where uh, discussions happen, but those action groups are not yet, or they are not formal. The membership is a little bit blurred and they don't have visibility uh, yet. Some of these action groups have a clear purpose, uh, but they have doubts on their capability to feed back into the overall implementation plan uh, of uh, Eurogeo. For Eurogeo as an initiative and beyond the Eurogeo workshop, there is the Eurogeo initiative. There, the, the initiative itself is a little bit blurred. So the workshop is clear, the initiative is a little bit blurred. So the added value to be part of Eurogeo is not necessarily well understood, even if they are clear, uh, uh, they are clear uh, added value in terms of uh, being here to, uh, today, uh, sharing, connecting with others inside the community. But for beyond that, the added value is not necessarily clear into contributing to uh, research and innovation priorities in Europe, for example. The visibility also of uh, Eurogeo is not necessarily uh, uh, guaranteed. For example, when you get back home, you will speak to your colleague and your colleague may not necessarily know what GEO or Eurogeo is. And it's very difficult to convey the message that you participated to this massive European uh, initiative. And the sense of belonging, belonging to the Eurogeo uh, community is not very clear uh, either. So 
We, we also have challenges on inclusiveness, so including our colleagues next door that are working on supercomputing, but could be part of your job, but they don't know that they could join. Uh, and we have um, uh, maybe issues with represent representativeness of Eastern uh, Europe and some countries that are underrepresented into uh, our initiative. We, we would need to work on the awareness of Eurogeo, therefore, but also on Eurogeo as, as a brand, something where I, as uh, being part of the Earth Observation community in Europe, can contribute and can benefit from. So what is this brand carrying for me? The, the main challenge that we have identified, and my colleagues around the round table can, can complete, maybe, is to make your geo alive between the workshops. And this has uh, been identified as one of the, the challenges here. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the next group was on in user involvement and co-design and the private sector. Yeah, yes, one. thank you. Uh, so uh, we had the pleasure to have uh, 10 uh, contributors to this uh, on this table uh, on my hand. Uh, and uh, we had additionally on top uh, a few contributions in the poster when it was uh, displayed in the, uh, in the meeting room. Um, among the key achievements, uh, I will uh, highlight two, which were clearly mentioned by all. Um, Oh, sorry, to start first with the contributors, six companies contributed to this, uh, three research entities on, on one he is. So we have a really good mix. Uh, um, about the key achievement mentioned by all, uh, numerous actions at the national level on the EU level are clearly recognized. And uh, there is a, a clear understanding of uh, private sector that uh, they are both a provider and a user of, uh, of Eurogeo. Um, they all uh, agreed as well that uh, there are so many numerous projects but uh, really a lack of visibility uh, on them and especially on the, on the outcomes. And I uh, mentioned, in fact, uh, maybe more, in, more, than the, more, than the, more on the research side, the lack of license, uh, which could be a, a way to, to stimulate uh, future engagement with other uh, entities. Um, the way forward. So linked to this, uh, there is a, a real need to, to get access to uh, Eurogeo catalog of results with to ensure the visibility uh, of the outcomes, uh, maximize the visibility uh, from people who are not aware on Eurogeo. So it has to be SEO friendly, for example, to be easily identified uh, on Google. Um, Eurogeo as such is clearly defined as a path uh, for uh, pan-European actors uh, in order to, uh, to contribute. Uh, they see value of the national geo, yes, uh, but they see sometimes uh, more value potentially at the UOGO one and uh, the action groups were mentioned several times. The classification and the actions of the action groups and thematics ones could really be a trigger to uh, engage the different uh, entities. Um, a mapping of uh, European actors at national level would be really more welcome in order to develop uh, as well the interaction at a different scale. Um, to come back to the license, um, the license mindset uh, was uh, said as potentially something which will stimulate the use. Uh, companies said that uh, they are interested to understand more, they don't know the maturity, the TRL of this, uh, and the license as well would be uh, interesting to know. Um, Yes, uh, that's it. The main points you mentioned. Thank you very much. And I think Albana, you want to add something? I'll speak from here. I'll speak from here. Yes. Okay. So, um, in addition very quickly. to. Yeah, very, very quick. We have just three points and one additional one, which is very important. We, we had a very, very strong female representation in our tables, which is good. And uh, so we spoke about the industry, research infrastructure, and the values. So in terms of industry, there is a diversity in the, engage, in the sectorial engagement. While we have the agricultural, which is strongly engaged in the earth observation, we have energy and all urban issues that are left out of the earth observation uh, data and infrastructure. So we need more engagement and more, and more involvement there. In terms of values, well, Europe is pioneer in open and fair principles. So we need to 
to the challenge that we see here is to build trust not only in the research and development phase but also in the uh, uptake phase or in the commercialization and the way forward of this is the contribution of Eurogeo through creation of sandbox of business models in order to show up to show off uh, use cases and I conclude with research infrastructures. So uh, we saw that co-design, that e-shape uh, uh, built as a framework is, is really very interesting and it uh, has been very successful. We see that in-situ data is strong in Europe. The challenge that we see is there is a reluctance in this uh, old, let's say, and uh, very established sectors to uptake into uh, new te technologies like the uh, IoT sensors, integration of other means of data. And uh, yeah. the way forward with uh, that we see is the uh, a clear regulation framework. So through Green Deal data spaces, through technological and legal enablers, we might enable this integration. Thank you. Thanks. And we go on with the operationalization, commercialization. Lev, you can stay or you can come here as you like. All right. So um, I will be within the two minutes, I hope. We are the last one to report. And as you can see from this picture, we're also the least easy to reach, which is probably rightly so because operationalization and commercialization is at the end of the line. Nonetheless, it was recognized as a very important issue and one that should be part of Eurogeo. And before I mention any achievements or any challenges or the way forward, the key recognition was that there is no clear mandate of what role Eurogeo should play in that regard. So the first thing that needs to be done is to find this sweet spot inside this maze and, and puzzle of different institutions, different programs, and so on and so forth and understand what is it that Eurogeo should achieve when it comes to personalization, commercialization. Now, when we look into the individual topics, one achievement that has been uh, recognized is the fact that already with eShape, there was the introduction of the sort of conveyor belt way of looking at things. And why is this important? Because people can actually start seeing that indeed, there's a whole path that you need to follow and there are different types of support, different types of achievements that you need to have along this line. So um, this is actually what also gave birth to the operational pipelines. Then we have looked into different structural, if I can say so, problems. Structural when it comes to the way individual stakeholders operate. And when I say individual, I don't mean the actual individual, but types of stakeholders. So for instance, the fact that research institutes or research actors in general that are involved in this type of projects do not necessarily have KPIs to bring the innovation to the market don't have the methods to do it, don't have the expertise to do it, and so on and so forth. So this is one issue. Second issue is that there is no easy transition from what they have done to someone else picking this up and, and bringing it to the market, which is something that needs to be fixed as well. Similarly, on the user side, open data, we heard it in the other uh, interventions, it's very nice, but then this doesn't necessarily mean free services after the end of a project. So there are awareness issues that need to be uh, clarified there. Very important and, and a very important theme also in connection to this sweet spot of Eurogeo is the fact that commercial doesn't compete with operational to public institutions. So both can coexist, both can happen together, both are equally important and uh, I can uh, run along. Finally, when we look into the way forward, some different themes have emerged, some actions from different actors, mapping for instance of what is out there, what is the most advanced research, what could be done beyond the, the research and, and where can we actually intervene. Also matchmaking between the different pieces of the stakeholder ecosystem so that this type of structural problems can actually be overcome. And I think I will leave it here and I would invite Mark to complement. Again, this was not meant to summarize every single point, but the main part. Very good, thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone wants to add on this, Mark? Yes. Yeah, no, um, thanks and thanks to Left. Uh, very, li very little to add. Um, maybe just to re-emphasize this point he was making on uh, there doesn't need to be competition between the public and private. I think it's almost even more than that in that what we need to start thinking about, and I have a very specific example of this at the moment in a discussion we're having with uh, colleagues at Armin, the, the results of a research project 
we tend to think there are two pathways after either it's going into a, a public service, sorry, a, a private sector application with a commercial, uh, a specific commercial uh, uh, product, or it's going into public services. But what we need to be clear is this is not necessarily mutually exclusive. There are possible parallel pathways where aspects of the research project or the product that was developed in the research project can support both a public service application for a specific policy and in parallel provide a commercial uh, application. And then I think the point left made is really what we need to do is identify this sweet spot. So in our minds, we have this matrix of research and operations on one side and public and private or public and commercial uh, applications on the other arm. There are various entities that have roles and responsibility in each of these boxes, four boxes of that matrix. And what we need to do is think, and we, in our mind, Eurogeo could actually be at the center of that, at the intersection of those four boxes, making the links between public and private and research and operations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of you. Thanks to actually all of you for these discussions and for all your input. If there was something you still want to enter to this discussion, put it in Slido, EGW 2023. And Thierry, you want to respond to all this rich input that I think feeds a lot into your future work? Uh, response is a <laughs> so long discussion that uh, we'll need more time for that. But at least I would like to thank all the, the participants to this round table because you underline things that we have in mind, but you, you put some words on the key issue we have uh, in Eurogeo to solve and to work on. I would like to thank all of you for that. I think uh, we are going to tackle, hopefully on the long run, all the questions you raised and all the, uh, the, the issue we can solve, we will try to solve it or to propose a framework to solve it. That's our duty in the, in the coming uh, years. In the, at least the two coming years. And I think we, we, we are very grateful uh, to you to be here and to support this activity. Again, Eurojo is yours. It's ours, Eurojo. And we, we have to collaborate on that and feel free to come back to us and to give us some feedback wherever it came from. We need you. We need you again. And uh, that will be the, 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 the step forward, uh, one step beyond, and to be sure that even if it's uh, one step beyond on, on this road, we need you and, uh, and we can put some madness also on what we are doing in order to, to be uh, very, uh, very creative and, and, and go further. Thank you very much.